Yes, I guess the first first question was, what's your songwriting process? Like, where do you, how does it happen for you? What's the inspiration? Is it, does it happen quickly? Does it take time? Do you do the lyrics first and then the music? Like, how does that work for you, Carly? Um, well, like, a lot of my songs I've written on the bus ride home after like a bad day. And then sometimes I just like, it happens different every time. I'll like black out and then it's there. And like, I don't remember how I did it. And sometimes I'll have like a melody in my head for weeks and then finally put words to it. So it's really a different process every time. Yeah. yeah. I you? feel like with me, I'm very much a kind of word vomit person where I'll have an emotion and it's definitely, I write as catharsis. If I didn't write music, I would be in such a worse place than I am right now. You'd be dead. <laughs> oh my god. Because every single time something really traumatic happens or something that really affects me mentally, I will write it and I will kind of act, it'll be kind of almost a spiritual thing of like, I'm going to write everything down that happened that's on my mind that I'm feeling right now and I'm going to finish it and that's sealing it and it's like turning it into, you know, this is this time in my life mm -hmm. and it's done like a little compartment mm -hmm. yeah and it's so like alchemy or like turning this negative like that's how I feel about mm -hmm. it sometimes it's like I'm turning this these negative like icky sticky feelings in my body yeah. and I'm transposing it into something that is like almost exploding out of me like same like a word vomit situation where it just kind of comes out quickly like a download boom on the paper mm -hmm. and then it's like a the tension that I was holding in my chest or in my solar plexus for anybody that is into that kind of stuff. Um, it like loosens and then I mm. kind of stop worrying about it, <laughs> like whatever it was, like, yeah. especially with like heartbreak songs. Like oh once I write that final yeah. song, you are done, boy. Okay. You're out of my life. Mm. <laughs> some people get a repeat song though, even if they, even if they don't deserve it. But yeah. sometimes it takes me a really long time to finish a song. Like I'll come up with some chords and maybe a few lyrics, like a verse, but then I'll sit on it for months or even years sometimes before it's like finished. Yeah, I've yeah. had some of those too that have just like mutated over the years. Oh, yeah. Like change out a couple little things. Like first song I'm going to play tonight, Generosity, I wrote, geez, I think it was like 12 when I wrote it. And it's mm -hmm. literally just been like chopped up, redone, reanimated to like what it is now, which is just a hodgepodge of you. My voice memos in my phone from when I first started writing um, well maybe a little bit after but like from 20 probably 2015 to now and every once in a while I'll like go back and I'll just click a random one because there are just thousands there's so many <laughs> it's ridiculous and it's like cool because there will be some where I'm just like that's staying where it's going that's gonna stay that's, that's, staying. that's, that's forever. Forever. like that is that you can tell I was 15 when I wrote that but there are other things where like a line will stick out to me or I'll get attached to a line. I'll be like, I have to have this in a song, but nothing mm -hmm. else fits right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it could be like months or years down the line where you like, something clicks, like a, an experience in your life happens where you have a new perspective and then all of a sudden that line makes sense and you can expand on it. Mm -hmm. And you realize what that line means. And I think that's also very cool. I thought that I was safe from you. Check twice under my bed Weeks sleeping in my living room To avoid waking the dead Invested in a new nightlife Just like when I was a kid So when I see a shape around midnight, it glows to where my brain thought you had been. And I've seen my voice memos are key. I have so, so many little blips of songs I come up with in the car, and I'm like, I, and then it doesn't even make sense later sometimes, but you still gotta do it. Yeah. 
All right. Question. Do, do you guys ever get songs that just come to you like when in a dream and you wake up either in the middle of the night or you wake up in the morning like oh I gotta get that down gotta get that down I actually have yeah, had that have really that and that's why I'll have voice memos and like the middle of the night and I can't be too loud because I can't like wake my family up and I'm like <laughs> and, and then in the morning I'll listen back and I'm like, what What was I trying to do? <laughs> I've heard about that, but there's no way that I could possibly, like, my dreams are so wild. I was in like this, so I always take naps before my gig, like a 40 minute nap because yeah. I need to, otherwise I'll go insane. Yeah. And uh, like 30 minutes into my nap, I was in that like between dream and awake state. Like a meditative and I was, state. Yeah, and I was like singing this song and I knew all the lyrics and then I thought about it too hard and I was like, what is this song? And I was like, this song has never, it doesn't exist. But I'm singing this song over and over. And instead of like writing it down, I just kind of freaked out and woke up and I went to my gig scary. and I ruined my night because I was uh, freaked out. Isn't that how like, like the Beatles wrote it, like one of the Beatles songs was written that way, like in a dream or Queen or something. They did a lot like. of trance meditation and they yeah. would write some stuff through that, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Tap into that creative source. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so much more literal though with my writing. I feel like I'm very much like, I'm going to tell you exactly who this person is, what they did to me and why I hate them for it. <laughs> And no one else it's basically it. naming someone Certainly. without the name. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, yeah you know, saying, like if the if yeah. the shoe fits, if you think it's about you, <laughs> if the shoe fits, it is. Right, right. <laughs> it might be about, about you. you. It's probably yeah. about Congratulations, you. Congratulations, you got a song about you. Yeah. <laughs> you were saying earlier you're having trouble writing when you're not feeling like more sad. Mm -hmm. I, I feel yeah. that same way. Like uh, when I'm sad or like I've got a broken heart, that is perfect uh, inspiration. That is the writing. fuel for fire yeah. for, mm -hmm. for songwriting, for sure. A yeah, little bit of pain. Kind of sad. A little yeah. bit of pain. It's going to be a lot of sad songs tonight. Right. Yeah, a lot of mine are like, like, actually most of mine are things that have never happened to me. And I don't know what it is, I just will like, I'll like watch a movie and if a character's going through something, I'm like, I'm going to write it like what they're going through. And people will be like, like after I play, we'll be like, are you okay? Like did that, like drug dealer's daughter. My parents are not drug dealers. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so none of that has happened to me, but I still like to feel emotion through other people. Like empathetically, like you can just sort of vibe with what they've, that's, mm -hmm. that's incredible. I envy that so much of you, like every single time you play a new song and it's especially the one about um, the, the road trip what is it? Seattle Can Wait. Seattle Can Wait. Oh my gosh. That one <laughs> yeah, is, it's one. about um, this girl who stops at a gas station and finds a little girl who's just escaped a, um, a cult. Sold as a ticket for a higher place in heaven. Said her cousin needs a few more wives before the age of 30. I saw confusion in her eyes when I said I felt that was sickening. I don't know how you write about this. Like, I wish I could just make up things, but I feel like every single time I sit down and write and I realize, oh, this is a good one, it's usually just such a dangerous game because it's about someone who's going to hear it. Like, they're going to hear it, they're going to know who it is, and I'm going to have to have an awful talk to them about it. And you know what? That's just the cross I have to bear. It's worth it. That's the risk if you get involved with any of songwriters. Yeah. You might get a song about you. Yeah, that's not high risk, <laughs> high risk scenario. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. You guys think of anything else that you um, think would be a good question? Or? What, like, when does inspiration strike you most? Like, mm -hmm. when? Like when during the day or like what situation? Just like what situation? When, like, when, yeah, like oh. what usually makes boys. you Boys, stupid boys. <laughs> yeah. Um, sadness, usually deep sadness. That's yeah. what, like Daphne was saying, um, her, one of your songs has, like you say, where you left me, I think it's Story. Yeah. And, um, 
like I just heard her saying that and I went home and wrote this whole song about like a murder. And it's just so from, good. It's so good. <laughs> just Wait, from, is that called Where You Left Me? Uh, it's called Deemed Innocent. Oh, but, oh I do know that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <right>. um, <laughs> went home and wrote a song about murder. Yeah. <laughs> it is but, so good, too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like just one lines, like I'll hear it and I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's genius. I'm going to kind of copy them, but mm -hmm. kind of flip it a little bit and turn it into my own. I've been scroll like I'll be scrolling on TikTok and my TikTok is very much it's for those of you who don't know what TikTok is <laughs> I don't know who's watching it it's like an app where you have videos that are curated very short videos that are curated to you and a lot of mine are people from like kind of my age group so in their twenties writing um, sad songs on acoustic guitar Phoebe Bridges if anyone like you just very much like that her. and there if any, anyone out there but um, I will. Here, a line. Hey, might see this. She, she might see this. this. Hi, She's Phoebe. Oh, Daphne. <laughs> I literally Phoebe. love you so much. Oh, my oh God. Daphne. I, yeah, every single song. Um, anyway, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll hear a song. And the, there was this line from this girl. Her name's Grace Gardner. And it goes like, she sang, I have this twisted and sickening feeling I'm going to marry you. And I was just like, I put down my phone. I was like, oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, and like, that inspired a song that I'm going to play tonight called Puppy Dog, and it was the instrumentals and that, that sentiment and the way that she sang it, and I was like, that's I need to tap into that. Like, that is what, that's why I fell in love with songwriting, like, that line. Just encompassed everything that I love about music, why I do music, and I don't know, I just got so excited by it, and I started immediately crying, and then I was like, I need to write a song. <laughs> so that's how I feel about, um, I think it's in Chinese Satellite, when Phoebe's like, um, I, I'd sit on the side of the road, like embarrassed oh, with a picket, picket sign. sign if it meant I, I get to see, see you when I die. That one I like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's I feel Do about. you? We talked about this a little bit briefly, but in terms of like stage fright and anxiety, because I feel like that's the question I always get asked. Is like, can't believe you can get up there and you can do that. And like, how did you overcome? Like, if and when you ever had it, like, what was your technique? Yeah, I mean, I. That? I was terrified to sing in front of anyone until I was maybe like 20, 21. Yeah. And it just kind of took enough exposure and experience doing it and enough people telling me that I was decent at it to like get my confidence up mm -hmm, enough. Mm -hmm. So like starting at your guys' age, I can't imagine like that is so cool yeah. that you guys can do that. But now I'm not nervous at all. Like I think I got it all out of the way when I was younger <laughs> and now I just, I'm excited <laughs> to play tonight. Tied up in string, my veins mutiny on my arteries. My blood, it seems to run off of petroleum and melt when things get sticky. I am too. I think a lot of it, I get freaked out about logistics a lot, so it's not like, I feel like when you're so vulnerable in your songwriting, it can be hard after you've done it for a while to get nervous sharing that part of yourself because, like, I get embarrassed talking between songs or like, a lot of people, musicians will try to be, will be funny and naturally charismatic. And if I try too hard, it just goes so badly. Yeah. But um, yeah. I, I feel like, when you're singing these very vulnerable songs about, you know, your darkest moments, pretty much, like, it's hard to... Keep it light in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like, at first I would get nervous, but then you realize that, like, everyone kind of feels this way at some point. Like, everyone has felt deep despair, which is yeah. what we write about, <laughs> what we're here for. So, I don't know, I think at first it was it still is a struggle. Like I still get nervous because there's a lot of people, depending on the gig, that are gonna be like, play something happy, play yeah. something upbeat. Yeah. Do you have anything poppier? It's yeah. My favorite. Yeah. It's my yeah. Favorite. Somebody literally asked me play something good one time, <laughs> and I was like, okay. I, I think I remember seeing you post about. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, I'm very like. I like yeah. calling people out. I like yeah. making them making yeah. them Heckle know. Yeah. Heckle the hecklers yeah. for sure. Yeah. Magic um. 
I've always been a little attention seeker. So I, I've never. She's so modest and like <laughs> soft, like you wouldn't expect it. That's I so just, um, I like, I like people because, like, songwriting is the one thing I've always been good at. Like, and it took me a while to like accept that, like, this is my thing. And so I do like. I don't usually get nervous, but I get like, I'll kind of dread it because it takes a lot of energy for me to like talk in between songs and stuff. Like I sometimes I wish I could just get up there, play and leave because like, you know, and, you and feel free yeah. to do that. I'm, I'm this close to maybe doing Same. that. Thank you. I'm like, this yeah. song is called this. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Yeah. But besides that, like I've never really gotten super nervous because I like being center of attention. Yeah. I grew up in theater. And now that I'm like out of it, and I'm, I haven't been in a musical or a play for like maybe three years, I just can't even. I'm like this playing my own songs that I've written. I so much easier than mm -hmm. memorizing a ton of lines yeah. because I look back. I was in like somehow I was in a Shakespeare play when I was 14. I'm like, how did I know all of those lines? <laughs> that's impressive. I have like stress dreams about it all the time. That's why I'll never do theater again. If you ask, nobody asks. <laughs> we care though. Sorry, I didn't get your name. Jen. Jen, Jennifer, um, yeah. You didn't answer the question. Oh, um, for me, I, so I played music forever since I was pretty young, and I would do like performances here and there. I was in a few bands um, in high school and college. I had crippling stage fright, panic attack stage fright, canceled gigs, panic attack stage frights for a really long time. Um, and turns out I had uh, chronic Lyme disease that I didn't really know about, so I got treatment for that about two years ago. Um, and I damage in my amygdala, which is your fight or flight. So my anxiety was like, had a physiological explanation for it. Um, and then two years ago after the treatment, the anxiety kind of started to go away. And that's literally when I first started gigging out. Wow. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Yeah. It was like, so I, I still get like, I still get little like flutters here and there, but it's definitely it's a game changer. Totally different story now. So. Are you guys excited? Ready to do a show? Yeah! yeah.